everybody, and welcome to Bass and Bonsai. Welcome back to Bass and Bonsai. You've been here before, right? Sure you have. Got a two for today. So I'm going to show you how to put this light back together, kind of talk about some of the things you can do to distress your light if you want it to look uh, just kind of army-like with uh, green and uh, sand, desert, FD, whatever. Float your boat, pick your poison, whatever color, and just to kind of give a look. Or if you want to take one, say you just come across the light that is sort of an FD color, but it came with a lot of black uh, plastic accessories, you can do that too. And you guys have maybe seen that video or not. But let me do the unboxing, and I'll talk about putting this one back together. A few little hiccups that I don't know if you would run across it with the True Surefire. If you don't know the channel by now, these are all knockoffs. This is, I don't own a... 200 plus uh, light for my pistol. I just have these uh, cheap uh, AliExpress, Timu, wherever you would come across them at. Possibly Amazon, just a knockoff. Surefire, uh, Wasden, I think, who actually makes them. But just so I have a little weight when I'm out at the range. But anyway, we've got an unboxing to do. Hey, unpackaging, basically. i got three packages in today. And normally I start with the biggest to the littlest. Today, I'm going to find my knife. We're going to start with the... Biggest to lowest. Look at this knife, huh? You guys ain't never seen a knife like that. Ain't nobody ever seen a knife, well, unless you own a wood burner. Yeah, you've probably seen a knife like that. So what do we have first? Ooh, oh boy. Oh, I've been waiting for this. I didn't know it was coming yet. I didn't know it was coming yet. Oh my gosh, this is like a bonus. I'll probably make its own little video. It costs enough money. Deserves its own little video. But this right here is my... Ranger proof Johnny Glock's collab trigger that I'd been. I don't know. There's a, I, and I, I'm sorry that I don't know the YouTuber's name, the channel that I saw it, but I saw this trigger first, and then I saw a YouTuber talking about it. It may not have even been this exact one, but he said they had a coupon code for uh, Ranger proof. So I went to their thing. These are like originally $94. Punched in the code, sure enough, got it for like 75 bucks. So is any trigger worth that? I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to put it on something. Let's get it all the way out of the package. Now, as you can tell, so far what I have is a wrench to adjust something and then the shoe itself. So it's centered, but it, at the back it makes you kind of look like, uh oh, it's off center, but it's centered on the thing. I don't know if I'm looking at a, uh, I guess the way the, almost look like it's got a little point there. That's the way that when they put in that little etching in, it kind of left a little bitty dingus sticking out, if you guys see that. It's actually a pretty firm spring, in my opinion. Just kind of seeing you definitely get some like you can feel the traction like when you uh, put your finger on that trigger it's not going to slide around which it usually doesn't a lot but that is uh not gold it's what they're copper with the red and i couldn't decide if i wanted copper and gold i wanted a gold with the red or whatever i was like i'll just get one see if i even like them so if I like the way this looks and feels and performs, once I mount, you know, put it in, install it in a blaster, then I guess I'll see if that code works again. But man, that's a lot of money just to pay for one. That's all you get. No bar, no nothing else. So anyway, let's keep going. I'm going to, that's, uh, if you're interested in that, be looking forward to a whole nother video. This video isn't about that. Wait a minute. There is more stuff. Okay, they did give me a more of a actual kind of a step-by-step -step on what they recommend, I guess, how to install it. So you do get a little kind of guide if you're, you know, if you're not a Glocksmith like I am, then they give you, I know what I'm doing, I don't need to, you guys know me, I don't read instructions, I know what I'm doing, right? Sure I do, sure I do, until it doesn't go bang. Then we get the instructions out and read them and go, what did we do wrong? What in the world did we do wrong? So let's keep going. 
Let's get my knife out. I mean, this, that, is a short, that is a brand new. If I could find my X-Acto knife, I'd put that blade in it. But around the time I got this, I lost my X-Acto knife. I think one of the kids ran off with it. I think one of the kids ran off with it. They, You can't keep uh, lighters because everybody in the house has their own candles, if you know what I mean. Those are scented, whatever, scentsy, all those different types of candle so they're always running off with the lighter to go light their candle so now this is for that right there glock 26 i was waiting for that to come in to see if i can get that set up to work if you guys don't know about that deal it's almost a disaster trying to put a glock 26 slide and barrel on a 19 frame which is a psa dagger frame and be looking forward to that i'm i haven't decided if i want to try it or not so i may give it a shot it's only a 50 dollar uh lower frame so if i goof up i could always just take and sell the glock 26 stuff or get another i guess p80 maybe makes a glock 26 version and slap it all in that but i don't want a glock 26 what i want is a glock 19 with the compensator on it that the rail it sets in the rail so remember we we're putting that on there you guys remember you guys remember that story that is yet to be determined so final package let's see what we got in this let's see oh here we go here we here we go i was curious about this thing too because up until i spotted this one I didn't realize you could buy these like ready to go. I thought you had to do a Johnny Glocks thing on them if you wanted to do it yourself kind of deal. I didn't realize anybody actually already. Uh... So, Orange County Custom Triggers, I think is where I got this from. Off of eBay, of course. Let me make sure there's no other packaging stuff that needs to be talked about. Ooh. Got a sticker. Another sticker. I don't know what I'm going to do with these stickers. But I'm getting them. So, and I'm still not sure. I've got so many builds going on. Which way I'm going to go where with the Ranger. The plan was to put it depending on, and that's kind of why I got these barrels out here. So that copper goes more more with the orangish color of the shadow systems than it does the uh, PSA dagger color. So I kind of want to stick with, and so does this thing, but this, let me spin it around. This thing is kind of brighter. I need to, the whole, whether you get metal that's anodized or aluminum that's anodized when it comes to steel. So yeah, those, I think all those colors that's a little brighter than the other three, but I think if I put those... The problem with the shadow systems, if I leave that barrel in the shadow systems, it doesn't take this. It's already got a Gen 4, and I don't think you can... I don't think you can put this in place of where the Gen 4... Maybe you can. It's a... It would be extended out a little bit, but I think it falls. I don't know. Maybe... Who knows? Maybe I'll try it. Maybe I won't. I think I'm going to put all of this stuff on the green. Uh, the PSA... Uh, compact, lower with probably the green upper. It's a possibility I'll transfer the shadow system upper onto that and build me one ultimate. Uh, because the War Poet upper, the slide, is different than any other shadow systems you can get. So it's, stay tuned. It's a possibility that could be what happens. But then on this trigger housing, let's open it up. They've already added, I think, unless they fooled me, I think it was only like 13 bucks. Uh, Shadow Systems, I have two two of these coming from Shadow Systems. They have like two different versions. They're like $7.50 each. I ordered two of those, but they're, I think they've shipped, but I'm not even sure. Those are coming uh, because I, and I, I'll talk about that in a second. Because I needed them because a dagger housing, where's a dagger housing at? I got an, one sentence somewhere. The dagger housing doesn't play well in here with the uh, 
Timney Alpha, the way you got to push that little pin that holds it. So I just was like, I'll just have a couple others. Plus, if you guys remember right, I've modified it, that one of mine, and it worked fine. But if you're gonna be messing with the Glocks and, or Glock clones, it can't hurt to have enough of these cheap, you know, seven ten dollar parts laying around in case you destroy one. So you get this and a wrench. Let's find out what this wrench does. So everything gives you a little Allen wrench. So, okay, so in here, if you look, I'm making sure they haven't put any other screws anywhere else. So, right in the back, if you guys have watched uh, any Johnny Glock videos, he talks about this. So they've already added it for you. They've already drilled through and put a set screw. You guys can see it sticking out there. And it turns, but it... So that's where you adjust your uh, the end, at the end of the pole. So if you trigger, gets set off, and then for the reset. So it shortens that reset. But if you guys have seen what they talked about, uh, which if you're using... Uh, whether it be a stock setup like this, I think even the Timney one, you could stick it in this, and I may do that just to try, but it doesn't really need any. But like on a Glock, you can't do this with the Glock uh, because the Glock one comes in this already. It's already made for this, so you couldn't switch it up, but you could basically copy that by having a drill bit, drilling yourself and getting a set screw, whatever size that is, and kind of just copy what they got going on here. This is already just pre-made and done for you, which I thought was cool for only like $13.50. A lot of the other stock ones were 10 or 12 bucks just for this without it already updated. Of course, you have to add your uh, ejector. It just is a bare piece of plastic with that added. So be looking forward to videos on, I may, I don't know if I'll go into detail on that. This is a... Unless you know what you're doing, really, I know I say I'm a Glocksmith, but unless you know what you are doing about how triggers work, this is something where this not necessarily a, a safety thing. I guess it could be because a possibility this could make it do like a, it just won't let it reset. So like if you fired a shot off, it may not let it uh it may not reset the trigger. It may reload and you'll have a round in, but the trigger didn't go back far enough to get caught again and reset, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. But anyway, that is future videos. Let me get my knife out of here. Let me put this knife up. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's not hot. It's just a knife right now. It's not a wood burning anything. So let me get, I, I guess I never did even open this one, did we? So we got three different things to go towards different builds. I'm actually more anxious about getting on this, even over the trigger, the even over this. Let me turn that where you can see it. And even over this, because if this will work the way I want it to in here, which I know to work in here. It should go right in and work. But they, that's kind of weird. The 26, it just, looks like there's nothing to hold it. It will kind of stay, but every other Glock I've ever dealt with or cloned, like when you push in, there's a little pressure, and then it goes into that one, and then that holds it. This one, same thing with the, this one. Same thing, but this one won't slide. It won't let me run it inside the uh, uh, channel. So I'm hoping I can get this one figured out on how I could do that. Maybe not. It may not work. You know what? Hang on. This isn't a live stream. I'm recording this so I can hold it. Fire on if I so choose. Okay, so we have a dagger. So a stock dagger, that's not cut out. I cut that out. It will hold a Gen 5 now. A, a Glock 19 Gen 4 or 5 barrel. Uh, barrel. 
slide will uh, work on this thing now. The trick is, if you wanted to do that, and a few people asked me about the PSAs and what should and shouldn't work. So to go from basically Gen 4 to Gen 5 just on getting a slide and barrel assembly to work, that's what you need on the front. But then you also have to buy one of those little adapters and run like a Gen 3 at the back because of Gen... I think I should have enough. So here is like out of the... Uh, a Gen 4 out of the shadow systems. And if you see how much bigger the back is... So it won't run in here. Or the Gen 5. Like... They're just they're made they're designed too wide for the bigger channel that is in all the newer uh, fifth generation and so so forth. But if you get a Gen three by this little adapter, put it on, then it will, you know, on your Gen uh, Gen three with the Gen three to four or five I forget what they call this little adapter, which the Shadow Systems basically has one on it, but the Gen four is still too big that it just it won't. It won't go in. Uh, so that little trick cut out in the front so your front of your slide fits in and, and will go all the way to where it stops. And then the only other trick on the back is you have to, on the slide you're using, uh, if it's already cut out, if it's a Gen 5, but if see that little notch, You'll need to take that little notch out, basically, and you can even move it over. Like what I do is I try to make that cutout that's there, I try to copy it right here. So I try to, I leave that side alone, but I come over here, I take that little notch out, and I also, I kind of come over just a, just a little bit, just to give myself room. This is really, this whole bottom part, like if you watched any of Johnny Glock's videos, it's really just kind of there to, almost as like a dust cover type to, so stuff can't get in. You know, kind of block it. It doesn't really have to be there. The main part that has to be there is what this metal part is enforcing it. That holds in your striker assembly, and then on one side will hold in on your ejector thing. So the whole bottom, actually, if you wanted to, you could just cut off. And and I probably need to make one like that just so I can, as I'm back and forth trying different stuff out, you can tell what's in there internally working, how it's working. It'll let you see this back there functioning and how it's picking up on the. Uh, on the cruciform basically right there it just gives you a little more of a window in there if you're wanting to watch or check something out anyway cut that to match it up and then there you can go so what i'm trying to do though is totally different i'm trying to take that's got it gen 3 so it'll work i'm trying to take this right here i don't even know what i did with the other here it is, way over here. And make it function on here, and I'll show you what the problem I run across is. Oh, I can't show you guys how to do that no matter what. So, I can explain it. I can't show it, I guess. Oh, man. i got to change that out because this one, I put in the Gen 5. Because if you put in the Gen 5... And actually, that's right. If you don't have to, that little cutter I just said, that's only if you run a Gen 5 trigger, which I would highly recommend, like the newer style. They just kind of work better or whatever. Anyway, uh, oh boy. So now I got to get, where is my, do I have one already cut or do I have to pull one off another farm? Anyway, we'll go more into that later. Sorry. Be looking forward to that video. This video, what I wanted to talk about is this light. So, let me make a little more room. If you ended up getting one of these and you want to color it like I've uh, done here and you've seen in a few other videos, the simplest way is just take a piece of masking tape, tape off that, and then just spray it whatever color you want. Uh, if you want... If you do want that to show through or a worn look, all I did was simply took a little, you know, completely cleaned it, took a, just a little dab of grease, 
and put a little grease where I wanted to be able to wipe it off, basically. And if you do that, you got to be real careful. I put a little dab of grease there, a little here, a little here, hung it through a little hanger right through here, and then just, you know, after I taped that off, of course, and then just painted it. And then it basically several hours later, you, you probably ought to give it a whole day. But then I, I came in and I rubbed the grease off and, you know, I can rub it more. It'll, and if you, that's just paint, it's not a uh, Cerakote or anything. I did the same exact thing on this one. And as you can tell on one side, I missed a little, but that's fine because these are going to look more worn in as you run them, especially if you run them in a holster or something there, that's going to fade off in the color, which that's black. And then this is that whatever color it's kind of like this, but it came out, it's a little different than even that. It actually comes closer to matching the PSA barrels than any color, but we'll fade through and it'll look pretty cool. I think even faded, you know, worn out. And you could also, after you done went to that point, you can take something like, let me see if I have it here. You can take something like this Brillo pad type thing and even have more of the other colors coming through your whatever color you painted. Or you could just do a light mist on the light just to, just to change it up, right? Because this was, you know, this and this. Just to get it to where I'm going to put this one on the... Uh, Oh, sniper green color of the dagger. It's not quite the same, but it goes, in my opinion, it you know just looks cooler than this one, and it takes it does not take long. It just let me explain it probably takes longer than just the actual process of just doing it. Same thing with this one. Now, if you follow this channel, you remember that I talked about one of these. I so I have eight of these so far, no issues with them except for this one that came in the package. I took it out and I was taking it apart to paint these. I could tell they were uh, stripped. They had longer ones in there. So I got it back together. I had to glue, I think, this one was iffy. That one and this one definitely stripped out, like they are stripped. So I put basically some, I basically glued it all back together the way they had it, shipping it to me. So this may be the one and so that I'm going to be testing, throwing it around, bashing it a little more than the others, just a, a durability test when that point, whoa, I foot blinded you guys. But so when I did that, I'm like, well, how am I going to know which one's which? I don't want to get mixed up and start tearing up one that is actually perfect. So I just did a funky paint. I like, I'll just make this one already look nasty right off the get go. I was going to do it with this one. I like, I don't want to go that far because I, I think that's going to look cool and I'll leave it. But this one, so I just really i didn't i didn't really plan on going as bad as i did but it's fine this one stands out in the crowd from these others that you know not perfect and it's going to fade it. it's not cerakote it is just a uh, rust-oleum uh, camo paint now these don't have lights i gotta get i got or batteries i ran out of surefire batteries there's one floating around somewhere but no more So stay tuned for all the further testing. I was going to show you a few tricks if you do um, want to tear apart these knockoffs or you want to tear apart your Surefire. It came black because I have seen these, the actual original ones, come different ways. Most of them already come with like the plastic is a, you know, sandish, very light sandy color or, you know, FDE. Some of them do have black. I think they come apart pretty much like this. There's three screws on each side. So just take the screws out. Uh, be careful on the back. If it's like mine, when you take that off, there is a little bitty, this dude. It's about half the length of a plunger spring. And how do I know that? Because in a pinch, because I lost one of these, I, you can uh, use a plunger spring in place of that. On the light. Don't try to put that in place of your plunger. That that's a big no-no. But that is roughly the same. And uh, one of these lights, maybe it's this one. Yeah, that that one. If you look at that, that's actually a plunger spring, not the actual spring. 
that comes on it because I lost one. It just went flying. And if you can tell by the Glock parts, I had several I bought in a lightweight and a whole other two extra kits kind of thing. So I had an extra plunger spring to use. I didn't try to cut it down because actually these are stiffer. So it compressed all the way is still not quite as stiff as that is by itself. It's close, but it's not there. So I just left it alone. So when you're taking this apart, that the, what I this whole video really, other than the unboxing, I wanted to make about is to be careful on which way. If this which, hang on. If you look, it's smooth, and then there is one side that has the this. Oh my God, my chair's squeaking and this won't focus. I'm driving myself crazy here. So that side, what I did to remind myself, it's basically, I know it's not a nut or a bolt, but it's lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So as you're looking at it, on if it was on the pistol, left side, right, left, right. You push out through the left on both sides like this. If you flip it upside down, you'll get confused. So basically... Push it out through the left on all these knockoffs. Every one of them were, were this way because this piece is up in here. If you try to push it out through that way, you're basically just dripping everything out to where. So you push from the left to the right, and when you put it back together, you push from the right to the left. And if for some reason you were to that point, say it won't hold, then you could go to the other side and basically punch it in on that side Would should give you a, a new surface to work with if at some point down the road that ever happened. I have had one of these, one of these, one of the black ones. It's the same way on the bottom, so you gotta remember though, the left, that's still the left. So, let me try to show you. So if you're looking at it, the both pins go the same way on all of them I've had. So the, let me get that into, so it's just like that. So you'll go from the left, from the left out and then go back to the right to get them in it's and if you don't it's not the end of the world but it would help so as far as painting goes the painting was real simple and i don't even worry about you know i hang these up on the do, do, do. actually just use the i just i have this it's almost like baling wire type wire I bought it at an auto parts store i don't even know what it's really for but a bigger roll of it so I kind of kink some of that wire on this end and then the, where that's hanging then I can manipulate it, move it around, paint it or whatever. And I don't worry about it. if I get, if you get paint on here, it's no big deal. Now, when you go to use it, you'll need to scrape just that. Let's see, I hadn't even scraped this one yet. Just that top. That's what touches the battery. I guess I could show you. No, that one I didn't even open up. This one, you don't even open up to do the painting on, but any of these that have been painted. Let me show you this one. This got batteries in it? No. So they're all going to look like that. Now, if you want to take your time and tape that off, more power to you. I'm not all into it because it, it's real simple just to scrape those little two little pieces. Light comes on, works just fine. But then putting it back together, it's pretty simple. You just put... Uh, that goes in there. The long pin, like I said, from the right end, puts that back in. Uh, from the bottom, same thing. From the right, you put that in with that little spring we just talked about right there. Pop that pin in from the right. That's your whole thing to actually, the light would work after that. And then all the upper stuff is, you'll pop this on. You don't have to do it. The pin will already be in. Pop that piece in. That'll fall down in its little hole. And then you reassemble the top. And remember, like I said in another video, as you're tightening them, if you have if it's real wobbly on your gun, hold you know put the three on, hold it in as you uh, tighten them up. In the on the right side, the one without any cutouts goes on the right. Kind of hold it in towards the center as you tighten them, and it will give you a tighter fit. Same thing on this one. You know, tighten that side up, spin it around, hold in while you're tightening these up and hold in and that will take any it, it may make it too tight you may have to be like oh that won't even slide on my rail and then you may have to just i would recommend just loosen one side a little bit and then to get a good tight fit so anyway 
that's just what I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions about any of that, be looking forward to, uh, I guess, see which one of these is my ultimate build. If the if this would end up working the way I want it to, I've had it in a few other videos where I have this. I just have a protector on it right at the moment, but where I have this on it, man, that just, and the way it fits on the length of a Glock 19, it just looks awesome. I don't know if I'm going to get it to work. If not, you're probably going to end up seeing my shadow systems on uh, something would probably be my favorite. I don't know. It could be that other the Glock I already almost have totally done. That thing looks pretty cool, too, with the ports, gold barrel, this barrel here. And this thing is already shows, I mean, it's a $50 gold barrel. It's, it's, that gold ain't going to stay forever. I'm just telling you guys that right now. If you thought it would, guess again. But all my builds are going to be kind of uh, Gucci-inspired, battle-worn builds. I don't want any. I've never, you guys know the deal. Not big on the fanciest of things, but I want decent little stuff. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching this unboxing. A little quick uh, look on the, the lights and the other stuff going on. But look back. I've, I try to keep putting out shorts just to bring pull people into the channel since now I'm kind of into the, some of the firearms. Still going to be doing the fishing. I just don't know when. We're in the middle of winter. It's snowing right at the moment. Actually, I've been driving snow all day. Just got off work. But uh, bonsai trees, if you're a bonsai viewer watching because of the bonsais, you're a trooper because I haven't done a bonsai video in probably four or five years. But maybe when I retire, another 13 years, I'm going to get back into bonsai. Or if I just get tired of shooting or fishing, I may go get some bonsai trees. But as right now, in the near future, I'm messing with these, so I'm doing shorts. Uh, try to do some live streams when I can. And then just throwing some videos together with my phone. And then when I get out and do some shooting, that's when I try to incorporate the GoPro and put a little more, not really thought, but time into uh, not producing. I don't produce videos. I just throw videos out there. I have over 1,500 videos on YouTube, mainly fishing, uh, then bonsai, then now some of these pistols. Uh, ultimate goal, who knows. But stay tuned and see if we're as proof as Ranger Proof. Thanks for watching, guys. I gotta go.